I'm Stacey Dooley. Hi, Stacey! And I'm packing my bags for some more sleepovers. I'll be coming out of my comfort zone. Imagine if I fall to my death in Scotland. To spend the weekend in the homes of Britain's more extraordinary families. You lead! <laughs> I follow. You've likened feminism to cancer. This is Hebrew. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. Imagine owning an island. Do you worry about having a criminal record? <laughs> my name is Stacy. Ready, go. What's the best thing about being a model? The money. <laughs> Humans yeah, don't belong yeah. in the UK. Yeah. Oh my god! I really didn't anticipate this. Over the last 15 years, I've forged a career that has allowed me to be a self sufficient, independent woman. Settling down with a husband and kids has so far not been a priority. Recently, I heard about trad wives a growing community of women around the world that have rejected their career ambitions to focus solely on becoming the archetypal good housewife. Your ultimate goal is to be a wonderful wife and mother, and that's wonderful. Since serving my husband, I have been much happier in my marriage. Our marriage has been thriving much more. My understanding of this movement is these women are very obedient, Right, the husband is very much in charge and they just take care of all the household chores, look after the kids, dress a certain way, present themselves in a certain way. Essentially, everything I'm not. <laughs> this weekend, I'm going to stay with one such woman who traded great career prospects to become a trad wife. You are encouraged to work on looking beautiful and you submit and you obey your husband. The lady I'm about to meet is called Lillian. She's replying to a tweet here. And she's giving us tips. Learn good housekeeping tricks. Smile. Be a good listener. Try not to talk too much. <laughs> Never speak over your husband, especially in public. Someone said, have fun being a slave to a man, though. I find those beliefs wildly outdated. I totally see myself as a feminist. Um, and I suppose, like, Lillian's setup begs the question, is this sort of two fingers up to feminism? arrive on a Friday afternoon in the sleepy town of Hamble, wondering if the tradwife movement is one huge step in the wrong direction for womankind. Hello! Hi. Welcome! Hi. Come on in! Thank you so much! Hello! Hello. This is Hello, Lavinia. This, this is, is Miss Stacy. Yeah, Lovely. and this is Ignatius. Hello, Ignatius. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you're not from England, you're from the state? So, my family, one generation ago, is from Central America, Nicaragua, and they emigrated to the United States when I was six months old. So, I grew up in the U.S., so my accent is American. And yeah. Lillian, you... My parents are from Taiwan and Hong Kong, so I'm Chinese, but I was born and raised in America, so... Everyone over the phone thinks I'm some blonde haired blue-eyed girl. <laughs> <laughs> what made you come here? I've been a little bit of an Anglophile since I was young. Okay. And it's rooted in sort of my love for the founding of the United States. There's like a long tree of heritage back to the UK. I thought, wouldn't it be nice to go and live there one day? I got the opportunity to transfer within my company. And I took it and we've been here, so. So Lillian, you're a, a trad wife. Are you happy with that description? Yes, yeah, and, and in that it means traditional housewife or traditional wife. It's almost like our family is a business and he's a CEO and he leads the direction of the family. Okay. So what's the plan for the weekend? So on Saturday, we're having our 10-year anniversary renewal of vows ceremony. Okay. 
And then on Sunday, our baby number three, who was born about three, four months ago, is going to get baptized. And so that's a really important event for us as a family to welcome him into the family of faith, if you will. Incredible. Yeah. And I'm allowed to sort of witness all yes. of that. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. You yeah. certainly live up to the hoop earring sort of <laughs> <laughs> reputation. Exactly. Your reputation precedes you on the hoop earrings. They're and my USP, so. oh, Felipe. Right. What's USP? My unique selling point. Oh, oh right. Oh. That's your brand. Earrings. It's my brand. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> as well as daughter Livy and son Ignatius, Lillian recently gave birth to her second son, Augustine. Oh, good boy. Hello. Oh, my Do you want to say hi to Miss Stacey? Hello, baby. Hi. Oh, Lillian, he's too much. <laughs> okay. So he was born literally right here in, in this, this room. room. <laughs> yes. How was that? It was great. So you show you where you're going to stay. Oh. So you're going to sleep in here. Oh, brilliant. Perfect. But the bed is not here yet. No, We're going to okay. set it up later. Yeah, perfect. Um, this is my room. Is that yeah. okay? You're not gonna wake Miss Stacy up in the morning, are you? By busting in here. Miss Stacy, don't break my heart. <laughs> Lillian is like super glamorous, really beautiful, like the lipstick's immaculate. She's like a vision. It was really funny actually, Felipe was like, oh, your gold hoops are exactly, exactly what I thought they would be or something like that. <laughs> God, he hates the hoops, he hates the hoops. So the food's all set up Perfect. in the back. Oh, and so, this. Lavinia, you can lead the way. Oh, oh. thank you ever so much. Is this my seat? Thank you. Well done. Look at this. Just so I understand, Lillian, as soon as you got married, were you a trad wife or has this been something that's developed over time? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this has definitely developed over time. Right. When we did have her, I felt like, yeah, that was the beginning of the transformation, if you will. So I would probably have identified myself as a feminist before getting married. And I was, um, yeah, very much interested in my own career, but it's very different now. <laughs> Are you happy? Does, does it work for you? Absolutely. I wish I was ready to embrace it earlier. Within the structure of this trad marriage, Felipe is the sole learner, while Lillian keeps the home. The couple have also decided to homeschool, keeping the children protected from outside influences. Okay, round. Twas midnight on the mountain brown, the cold round moon shone brightly down. Do you worry that a mainstream school would distract Livy? I think so. They're so impressionable at this age. And even sometimes when we make new friends and they maybe cuss or something, I think it, it would make it normal for her and then it would make it difficult for me trying to enforce a behavior that she then wants to mimic somewhere else. Mainstream school will never be for Livy, you don't think? I don't think so. With two master's degrees, Lillian is more than qualified for the teacher position. You've clearly achieved a lot mm. and you've decided to give it all up. In essence, do you ever think, you know, I could have, I could have done this, I could have done that? I did think that when I was in the first two or three years of marriage. We were choosing where to live based on Felipe's job because he has more earning power. But really, honestly, after having our daughter, it just changed the way I thought completely. If you were the one mm -hmm. with the earning power, mm -hmm. would Felipe be willing to stay at home? No, I don't think he would. No, because I think for most men, especially masculine men, when you have the wife who is the main income earner, there, I don't know what it is, but it just seems like the husbands feel lesser, they don't feel appreciated, and then infidelity occurs. It's quite high for if the woman makes more money than the man, then the man usually goes off and finds another woman that he can be, he's better than. But doesn't that then sort of limit your dreams? So I think it's a myth to say that women can have it all. In the 
trad wife world, gender roles are far more polarised, with the man of the house holding authority. Felipe works for a local engineering firm. I'm curious how he defines his role within the family. So, are you a trad husband? If you imagine a city, right, in the, in the Middle Ages, people used to build these heavy walls around the cities. If Lillian and the, ch the children are the inhabitants of that city, then I'm the hard wall around it. So if something dangerous comes, I'm the first point of contact. I'm the wall that protects them. That's built into my DNA. It runs in my blood. What makes a good trad wife? What do you expect from Lillian as the CEO? So Lillian is like the gardener of the garden. She looks after all the flowers and creates beauty in the house. And she is there to inspire me to be a better man. In terms of the money, the mm. decision making, yeah. are you pretty much in charge? My check goes straight into a shared account and she does the grocery shopping, she does clothing shopping, she gets an allowance. So she manages all the purchases. That's the way the money is handled. It's not like I inspect every purchase my wife makes. Do the kids look at this setup and recognize that actually dad's in charge? What dad says goes. Yeah, yeah. So we, um, if we ask the kids, so who's the boss? They'll say daddy's the boss. Some people may look at this setup and think, mm, it lends itself to the woman just, you know, mm. playing that traditional, mm. stereotypical role where she's subservient and she mm. shouldn't offer opinion and she should only mm. speak when spoken to. <laughs> and we want to move yeah. from that, right? Yeah, certainly. Lillian has many opinions and she voices them all the time. She's of equal importance. Her voice matters just as much as mine. Although the buck stops with me and I make the ultimate decision. I mean, I'm a 33-year-old woman. Yeah. I earn my own money. I run my own house. I don't have to answer to anyone. Yeah. But I've never relied on a man. Right. You think that's a fault, then, to have to rely on somebody? Uh, I think it makes you more vulnerable. And do you think being vulnerable is bad? I don't want to find myself mm. totally reliant on a man. Yeah. Because that means if I'm not happy and I don't feel fulfilled and complete, I might have to stick around. Yeah. Whereas the life I've chosen, mm. I can yeah. do as I please. But I appreciate that probably sounds very selfish to you. It does a little bit. Yeah. It means you would not be willing to persevere a little bit. I think in this household, masculinity and femininity, they're really important. You know, them gender roles aren't fluid at all. They're very structured. I don't think the modern interpretation of equality appeals to them, either of them. So, I've got a gift for you. This is brilliant. That is so cool, thank you. So I haven't worn an apron for like 18 years. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know they were still a thing. <laughs> okay, what do I need to do? Do you know how to cut up a bell pepper? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> do you need help? Um, I eat out a lot. <laughs> so yeah, describe your typical day then. So yeah, when just do you work. go out with your boyfriend? Like work is all consuming. Mm. I mean, Kev and I, we've been together two years. So do you, do you want to get married at some point? I don't think so. Really? Never? Actually, no. I think I'd be more interested in starting a family than getting married. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that wouldn't be a prerequisite for you or anything? You would no. Just, you could have children without getting married? Right. Mm. I think there's a bit of a danger to that just for the children's sake. I think a lot of problems come from when, when parents separate. It is, it is so prevalent these days not getting married. Um, whereas only 50 years ago, it was taboo to have children without getting married. Oh, completely, so. yeah. Kids outside yeah. wedlock was like a sin yeah. in some people's eyes. <laughs> what am I doing with these? Half. Half and then half so, again. So, what's going on here? 
Felipe, um, we're running late. Yeah, what a disappointment. Can you cook, Felipe? Pop them in here. Um, I can fry an egg. You can fry an egg. Yeah, yeah, boil an egg, fry an egg. Yeah. I'm kind of a jack of all trades. <laughs> Will Felipe be annoyed that dinner's late? If I have to take care of the home, then there's some standards, I think, then keep to them. But no, he doesn't like berate me or anything. My pay. Disciplined. Uh, no, nothing like that. I would just get, I would just be reminded that next time have it on time, I think. I suppose what makes your situation unique is you couldn't say, look, Felipe, I'm not cooking tonight. You know, I ain't got it in me. You would have to ask him if that was okay. Right, right. But I guess the modern woman would be like, you should learn how to cook, clearly. You need, you're an adult, that's what we hear a lot. So if, if Felipe has a loving, traditional housewife, why would he need to do it, right? I think the world would be a better place if more women were willing to back down and just say, okay, I trust you. <laughs> you can't hear it, but my heart is slowly shattering. <laughs> mm, this is good. Thank you, both of you. I think you have the chance of becoming a trad wife today. <laughs> I think you have the chance. You have the stuff. I would say, don't hold your breath, Felipe. <laughs> I actually can't think of anything worse than being a trad wife. I would be useless, completely and utterly useless. It divorced me in a heartbeat. OK, go get ready for bed. Come on. I think on a surface level, we get on is deceptive. You know, the obvious elephant in the room is I'm a modern day feminist and Lillian and Felipe don't seem to appreciate modern day feminists. I don't know if it's fair to say she's been brainwashed. I think she believes that this is very much her choice. How did you sleep? Yeah, perfect. Thank you yeah. so much. That's great. That's great. I noticed that Felipe and Lillian have a fair amount of religious artwork. And something tells me it's not just for show. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation so rich and free. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all. For many conservative Christians, the father is the head of the family and demands a level of discipline. We try to be very diligent about curating what they watch. There's strict rules, so only Saturday morning is TV time. They get to pick one thing and I pick one thing. Transformers has made the filter because it's a very clear picture of good versus evil. So, biblical. Yeah. In many ways. That's right. That's interesting. So, yeah. they're only allowed to watch TV on a Saturday morning. And only if they've been good that week. Okay. So, the weeks where they're not good, Lavinia, what happens if you don't watch TV on a Saturday morning? Rock march. What's a rock march? You form a march with something heavy on your back. Yeah. Why? Because we were naughty. If you were naughty. Yes. Mind you, it's not so heavy that they're like falling backwards. That's uh, I've never heard anything like that before. So, Lavinia, what are we trying to remember when we carry that heavy book bag or rock on our back? Oh, that's Jesus Christ. That's right, because Jesus carried a cross. And so we carry a heavy thing to remind ourselves that, you know, that, that the Lord made a big sacrifice for us and that we should be grateful. And that great gratitude should translate into obedience and good comportment and love. Obedience is a core belief in the trad world 
And today, Lillian will be making the ultimate commitment when she renews her wedding vows. Tell me a bit about the vows. When we first got married, you remove the obey part. And then, right, and then now that we are transformed to a new vision, we're doing the classic unwatered down vows. So this time you're gonna say that you're, you're keen to obey. That's right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna vow it. Vow to obey. I just feel like I understand my role better now and that's what I want to promise him in my vows, yeah. You don't feel restricted, you feel enlightened. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yes. I wish I, I would be able to, if I could time travel and tell my younger self and somehow convince my younger self that, you know, maybe you should respect your husband more and submit to him because the beginning of our marriage was quite, you know, we had a lot of disagreements and it was very unpleasant at times. And I think it could have been avoided. If you had have just been a bit more obedient. If I were less rebellious. Lillian is cementing her commitment to becoming a trad wife by updating her wedding vows. Welcome, please be seated. We'll see you soon. We'll see you in there. How are you feeling? Good? Great. Butterflies, but good. Yeah. Butterflies were a lovely feeling. Yeah. yeah. I mean, something great's about to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nearly a century ago that the church offered an alternative service without the bride vowing to obey. The vicar has reluctantly agreed to use the original version, but doesn't want the service filmed. It seems the trad wife movement is a little contentious, even to the oldest of establishments. I, Lillian, took thee, Felipe, to be my wedded husband, to love, cherish, and to obey, till death us do part, and thereto I give thee my troth. the ceremony went as they planned. It was interesting actually, like the vicar, prior to the service starting, there was a bit of a disclaimer. He said, you know, some of this language may appear archaic and outdated, but obviously Philippa and Lillian wanted that language used. All right, welcome everybody. We are so pleased to have all of you here. It means a lot to us. <laughs> <laughs> so you two are work colleagues. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. How much do you know about the trad wife, trad husband movement? It was never, never anything that I'd ever <laughs> thought about, considered, or even like aware of its existence. Um, mm. It was only when Felipe started talking about it in an office environment, work environment, that. <laughs> that everyone starts rolling their eyes going, yeah, we had that in the 50s, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> Is Felipe a misogynistic lunatic? Mm. He has his moments when he will, he will come across that way. It's so completely out of the norm that it appears that way. <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I tried that with my wife, it just wouldn't, yeah. it just wouldn't wash. You do chores around the house then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course I do. Yeah. Not of course enough. I do. <laughs> not enough. Did Where's you hear your that wife? Did you I hear need that? to find your not, wife. Not enough. No. Oh, Sarah, do I do chores at home? Yes, he does. I'm very lucky, actually. Oh. Does so you haven't been converted? He's tried. <laughs> <laughs> we are going to do a quick pub uh -huh. quiz about the couple. Ooh. Here we go, first question. Where did the couple meet? I know this. I see you Googling over there. I've been doing that. <laughs> Since moving to Britain six years ago, Felipe and Lillian have found no shortage of friends, many with similar ideals. You met, interestingly, at work. We did, yes. yeah. Yeah, I took a liking to her and found her very intelligent and switched on and just... And then he locked me up at home. <laughs> yeah, then I married her. Yeah, the rest is history. Yeah, rest is yeah. history. <laughs> Alina has been one of the more vocal members of the trad wife community. Today I'm going to share with you five reasons why I love being a traditional stay-at-home housewife. Having created her own YouTube channel and appeared on various chat shows, Alina was surprised at the amount of negative criticism she received. 
I wonder if the feminists, those that really oppose what you're about, fear that you're undoing all of their hard work? Personally, the only people that have come to attack me are young women who aren't married and don't have children. My understanding of feminism is that it's about women being autonomous over their own lives, mm -hmm. making decisions that make them happy and by extension their own families. Mm -hmm. So isn't that what we were fighting for? We have the vote, we have the right to work, we should have the right to stay home. People think my husband's in charge of me. Mm. That's what people really hate, mm. the idea of the fact that it's really anti-feminist. I don't rule my own life. Whereas actually, I've got more freedom now than when I had a boss saying, why weren't you here at 9am, mm. you know? Do you think there's a need for feminism? There's a need for all human rights. Boys need rights too. Mm. I think we've... I think the tables have turned a little bit. We're talking about girls a lot and boys are getting left behind a little bit. You know, it's kind of like slogans like the future is female. I've got a seven year old boy. He doesn't understand the nuance of that and the history behind the future mm -hmm. is female. Mm -hmm. So he's going to see that and he's going to be like, well, what about me? You think we've gone too far the other way? I just think it's become aggressive. It's almost like become cool to bash your man. Like, oh, men are useless, men are good for nothing. Men are... And there's a lot of negative language surrounding mm. men. If I heard my husband talking to his mates... In derogatory terms about you. About all of us, yeah. we wouldn't stand for that. No woman would stand for that. So why are women doing it and getting away with it? And why is it cool and glamorised? Some argue that the fight for equality is spoiling the romantic connection between men and women. Others would say that by celebrating femininity, trad wives are pandering to men's desire for dominance. Where do you want to go? I, you will see. You where lead. I, <laughs> I follow. Yes. <laughs> Here's your tea. Oh my God, Lillian. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah. While playing Gooseberry on the couple's wedding night, I find myself wondering just how submissive Lillian really is. When it comes to the bedroom department, is it the same kind of setup? What happens in our own bedroom, I'm not willing to discuss. But I'm willing to discuss generally the role that sex has in traditional marriages. Right. So in terms of relationships, Sex is sort of the most sacred aspect of that. And it's not only sacred, but it's the glue that holds relationships together. The teaching is that the woman owns the man's body and the man owns the woman's body. We are one flesh, and that's a biblical term. Mm. So we are not supposed to deny the other person mm. if they want to engage. Do you think it helps, it's helped your marriage and it's helped your sex life, that Lillian always looks so together mm. and so attractive? It doesn't hurt that Lillian is quite attractive, of course. Um, but if you then add on top of that, I'm a wife that is your biggest fan. I'm a wife that wants to see you succeed and I'm not going to put you down in public. It makes the desire more intense for me. Right. I wonder if some married women will be watching this thinking, the last thing I want to do when I've been scrubbing the bathroom tiles all day is rip my man's clothes off. Mm. Where are they going wrong? I think it comes down to getting better at it. I had no desire or understanding of how to keep a house. And I think it's taken many years now. So you've trained yourself yes. to enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. I love doing the laundry. That's my favorite thing to do now, especially with my tumble dryer as my gift from last Hot. Christmas. It was great. <laughs> do you make a, a conscious effort to flirt with one another? Is that important? Of course, yeah. yeah. I get home and I grab her rear end <laughs> and I grope and things like that. <laughs> Why not? I think, it, I mean, things just get better with practice. So we just practice a lot. It just gets better and better. <laughs> oh my God, Lillian, good for you. <laughs> it's Sunday 
and Lillian is busy prepping for baby Augustine's baptism party. <laughs> Did you want to bake some banana bread with me this sure. morning? We're going to cream 140 grams of softened butter. I think Livy is probably more capable than I am. <laughs> oh. The next part is just another 140 grams, but of sugar. So 140, 140 is 280, isn't it? So yeah, oh, let's to... just tear it. So hit the tear button. Oh, fine. That's how you use a kitchen scale. <laughs> this is so tragic. <laughs> oh. Do you miss any aspects of your old life, your old self? The things I used to value about myself, like being attractive, being sexy, being able to play guys, like I, I did not treat them with much respect. And then once I conquered one, I was ready to go on to the next one. Ah. And I think that's because of the men that I met and dated were not masculine. They were, they were ready to grovel for me. And it turns out that's not what I wanted. I have some old photos here. But there's, um, this is an example of... Look at that! My Daddy. dissertation. So yeah, there's that professional side of me and then there was the frivolous side of me where I was modeling <gasps> back in the day. That's amazing. Daddy. You like that? Daddy. You would wear this one. You look great! <laughs> I would not look like that. I'm not 5'10". <laughs> I like E.T. <laughs> so yeah, I was one of the larger group of feminists that liked the idea of equality, um, and they want to have their own career. They want to be their independent own woman. So without Felipe, I don't know if I would have turned from feminism. So that could be interpreted in two ways. Either he's sort of shown you the light mm -hmm. or he's brainwashed you. It could be, but he's definitely, I think he's kind of like my knight in shining armor, which I think every little girl would love to have. I'll also try to let you match these up. Um, so you prefer who you are now than Absolutely. who you were? I like that I'm able to think, unlike the trad wife um, stereotype of like Stepford housewife where you're just mindless, I think men need to have someone they can spar with intellectually at home. I can't imagine any man or woman being able to walk over Lillian. And her confidence shows on social media where she defiantly defends her trad wife stance. You're quite bold on Twitter when mm. it comes to feminism. Um, in the past, you've likened it to cancer. Mm -hmm. That's um, pretty extreme. It is pretty extreme, yeah. But I think feminism is pretty extreme as well. Wow. What do you say to those feminists who are appalled at your take on feminism? I understand that they might feel like I'm being, I am undoing their work but I do think that they are being duped into this fantasy of what equality means. Feminism, I think, does place the woman front and center, me, 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 I, 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 is very selfish and is always trying to get the next thing. We have to, we have to win, we have to dominate. We have to have women CEOs dominating men in every business. We need you know, female presidents, prime ministers, and I don't know if that's making women happier. I think the idea that there's genuine equality in the West mm. is ludicrous to really? me. Really? Yeah, I mean, I still feel like there's a long way to go. Do you think I should have my hair up or down? Maybe, yeah. Up? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay, I will. Six-year-old Lavinia is helping me get ready for her baby brother's baptism. You look pretty enough without me. Oh you my look pretty enough. Don't break my heart. It's in here, right, honey? Of course, Lillian's wardrobe has been chosen for her. I did want to ask you, honey, this thing. Should I wear it underneath it? Because it's like super vintage or not. Well, today. Let's, see, let's see it with and then I'll judge. Okay, we'll step out and, we'll and then... see what it looks like. Call us when we're allowed to have a look. Sure. You picked this dress. Yeah, I picked this dress specifically. So um, I bought it just to celebrate 10th year anniversary and our trad wife evolution. And if you really don't like something, like you just think it looks yeah. ugly and it doesn't look feminine, yeah. um, what do you say? I say, that's not flattering. 
I think you have outfits that flatter your figure better. Mm -hmm. Things like that. Okay, so this is with the um, yeah, like underskirt. It. I like it with it. You yeah. like it with it? Yeah, I like it with it. Yeah? What do you think, What Steve? do you think? Uh, you know, I always think you look utterly beautiful. The dress isn't totally my vibe, but it looks amazing on you. It's beautiful, yeah? of course, because I picked it. Obviously. <laughs> How should a woman look, in your opinion, which you're entitled to? I would say a modest sort of style that accentuates her figure, but not to the point of sexual attraction. Yeah. So nothing too provocative, yeah. but just enough to show that she's got it going on. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Do you fancy Felipe every day? What do you mean, fancy? Um, do you appreciate his aesthetics? Do you think, oh, I hope, you know, I can't wait for later? I don't know what that means. Um, um, uh, I am attracted to my husband, yes. Yeah, and I'm very happy to have intimate moments with him. Yeah. Throughout the day, it would be great. You don't have to wait until bedtime. Yes, girl, good for <laughs> yeah. you. Uh, but we can't while you're here, so. <laughs> yeah. I'll be gone tomorrow. Yeah, I know, I'm counting now. <laughs> <laughs>
But I would say, you know, feminism is it's about choice. They're grown women, they're of sound mind, so I can't, you know, kind of <laughs> I can't bowl into their lives and say, you've got this wrong, and I want women to make their own decisions as long as they look like mine. That's, that's, that's not how it works. Oh, look at this. Dear Miss Stacy, so nice to meet you. I hope you'll live such a loving life. It's been such a lovely time. I think I like all of your earrings. Oh, thank you. And all of the jewels you wear. <laughs> I'm so touched. Thank you so, so much. Dear Lord, we thank you for this wonderful weekend that we've had with Stacy. And Father, as we say our goodbyes, we hope that lasting memories are left in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can you do the cross? Oh, she's sad. Uh... Oh my God. Mm. Babe, what are you crying for? Huh? Is it because Miss Stacy's leaving? Mm. Oh, baby, don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> if you're breaking my heart. As my stage draws to an end, I'm left considering the independent life I have forged and if one day becoming a mum could change things. There will be people thinking Lillian has conformed and she has compromised herself and, you know, you're wasting those masters or you could have had this amazing career. Seemingly, that's not what's important to her. What's important are the kids and she wants to be around every minute of the day for her children. Oh, they were good. Thank you, Lillian. You're welcome. Of course I'm not going to become a trad wife. I can't think of anything I would least rather than obeying a man. What would your ideal setup be then? <laughs> Stacy and 11 Bulldogs because she ain't married, she's got no kids and she's lonely in this massive house. <laughs> I must not knock any of these pictures on my way out, Felipe. <laughs> that would be <laughs> a bad way to end the weekend. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank I, you for being here. I, I really, really appreciate it. Have an amazing night this Thank evening. You. Have a great day. <laughs> and I hope, I hope Kevin enjoys the shirts you'll be ironing of and, and the cakes you'll be making. The banana bread. Well, actually, right? I could make the banana bread. Right. Yes, you can make the banana bread. Yeah, that's not... In, yeah, anyway, I won't, but um, <laughs> thank you so much. See ya. Bye, Bye. Stacey. Bye. Bye, my Bye. Oh, good boy. <laughs> <laughs>